all right hi there welcome to my channel this might be your first time here because you're interested in hearing more about a honda ridgeline gen 1. mine's a 2007 so i'm going to go over the issues that i've had with my ridgeline i've spent about eight thousand dollars in the last two years now mind you my truck is almost 15 years old and a new Ridgeline is about $42,000. That's about $8,400 a year. I'm not ready to let her go just yet. So regular maintenance, you know you got to change your oil, transmission, fluid, your VTM rear differential fluid, transfer case fluid. Make sure you use the Honda ATF DW1 transmission fluid. Don't use some generic fluids um, and that's because this is a four-wheel drive all-wheel drive vehicle and those three big fluid changes for my transmission they run me about four hundred and fifty dollars every thirty thousand miles which isn't too bad and that is at the dealership I have had the same dealership do all of my work maintenance any repairs they've been great to me I know a lot of them are dealerships and People don't really like using them, but I've chosen to use mine. I usually am lucky enough to get the same mechanic to work on my engine and my vehicle. So, all right, so let's move on to timing belt, water pump, belts, and spark plugs every 100,000 miles. And that's, you may choose to wait a little bit more, but on average, I would say 100,000 miles, you're safe. It won't seize up your engine when your timing belt breaks. All right, so as you know, there's a J-Series VTEC V6 engine in this truck. It's a long lasting workhorse. Um, a lot of them have gone over 400,000 miles. Mine's at 150. It's pretty low miles, but they're mainly highway miles. So, so far so good. Now, the known issues with the Gen 1 Honda Ridgeline is the radiator you must get it just replace it you can replace it with another oem you can replace it with i don't know delco whatever you decide just make sure you replace it because it has an issue called smod which is the strawberry milkshake of death so what happens is there's a belleville washer between the male fittings it corrodes expands and causes the fittings to pop off which causes your radiator fluid to mix with your transmission fluid and it can ruin your transmission. Now, that's obviously very expensive. It's much cheaper to just replace your ref your refrigerator, excuse me, your radiator, and that way you don't have to deal with it. I've had my power steering high pressure line leak. I had that replaced. Uh, obviously, the Takata airbags, everybody's had a recall on them. It's free, just go in and get it done. Um, another known issue are the plastic side rails on the bed. Over the years, they tend to get loose, and some people have actually had them flip off as they're driving down the road. When I found out about this, I went and looked at mine, and I noticed that they were, they're a little loose, so there's a cap at the end of your rail, and you can watch, vid there's tons of videos on YouTube on this, and there's a screw in there, you, a Phillips head screw, just unscrew it, and then slide off your bed rail. I went ahead and did that and took off the old two-sided tape. I put new two-sided tape on there, slid it back in place, put the same screw back in, did the same for both sides, and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. So just make sure you do some preventative maintenance on that. And your third brake light on your roof towards the back, above your sliding glass window in the back, it has been known to flip off and fall as you're driving down the road or if you're in a car wash. So mine hasn't done that and it can be expensive to replace that part. Um, I went ahead and got like a Gorilla Glue or any kind of glue that stays really well and I just glued on the edge against the roof, the metal roof and then the, because that's a plastic piece and I've, I'm, it's about time for me to replace that glue because it's cracking with the desert sun so I'm going to go back and I am going to put some more glue on there because I really don't want that piece to fall off. 
Speaking of my roof, because I'm out in the desert in Las Vegas, um, the clear coat is almost all gone from the roof, not just mainly the roof itself, but the backside and the front right above my windshield. It looks white because the paint is just coming off. It's just really rough out here. So I'm probably going to look at getting my truck painted. Um, I'm looking at like a gunmetal gray matte or maybe a black matte look. And I've seen some trucks with that paint. It looks really sweet. So if you've had that done and you love it, please comment below. Let me know what color you've repainted your ridge line. And if anybody locally has had that done and they really like who they used, let me know. All right, so I've had, um, there's a lot of door dents, you know, you know how it is. I've had people rear end my truck so many times and it's, it doesn't do anything to my truck. It ruins the front end of their car. I don't care at that point, that's your problem. All right, back to replacement parts on my truck. I had the alternator replaced at 130,000 miles, 13 years. That's a long time, that's not an issue. I had numerous oil leaks and I went into the dealership and I said, look, just figure it out. Over $2,000 later, they figured it out. It was the oil pump, they replaced it, and the rear main seal. But again, that was at 13 years. So it seems like my, my truck got to 13 years and a lot of things just started falling apart because of not just mileage, but age. Uh, I had an AC hose leaking and I decided to just not take it in because it was winter time. But once it, the spring came up and it started getting warmer, I took it in. It was about 900 bucks. They replaced it. Obviously, the part is not expensive. It's all the labor. If you know how to work on your vehicle, kudos to you. I don't. All right. So the front sway bar links were also replaced. And I just had my front struts replaced shock absorbers and it drives like new it's fantastic especially down four-wheel drive dirt roads awesome um also i got four new tires and they were telling me one of my tpms sensors was was not functioning and they asked me you know have you ever replaced them i said no those are the original tpms sensors from brand new so it's 15 years old and they said wow usually they go around 10 years so we had those replaced, um, about $200, $250 on those. So my RTL did not come with a hitch. So I went ahead and ordered, believe it or not, it's, it's really not too hard to find parts for this Gen 1. But lately, because we've all had issues with, with finding parts for our vehicles, heck, even finding vehicles to buy, because it's this whole chip thing and anyway so they did have an uh an oem hitch for me with the harness so i bought that and had the dealership install it the harness and the hitch was 450 the installation was about 150 it's really not that bad you know for 150 bucks i'm not going to crawl into my truck and just sit there and just kill myself trying to put this on again you do your own work kudos to you so I'm also looking at getting my windows tinted. I haven't done that. I always cover my windows when I'm um, dispersed camping. But I'm thinking, you know what? Since I am keeping her, might as well get the windows tinted. It keeps it nice and cool inside. But because I don't have a rear view camera, I'm really not. I think I might do a light tint on the back window because I still need to be able to turn around and look back. Um, I'm looking at wireless backup cameras that you attach like to your your license plate but I've heard that people can just walk by and take it so you have to actually take it with you every single time you park I don't know I don't know if I that doesn't sound very user-friendly that seems crazy but I've also heard of people actually attaching them to their tailgate I don't know so if you've had that done to your gen 1 put a comment below and let me know what it is that you've actually purchased did you install it? Did you have somebody else install it? How much was it? That kind of thing. So, all right. So, um, I'm looking at, if I do paint my vehicle, I'm looking at painting the roof white, almost like the FJ Cruiser. 
because that way my truck stays cooler. It's not obviously going to have that issue again with the sun beating down on it. And as you can tell, I'm near a road up here in the mountain and people are just screaming down this mountain. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. It's really not a lot. This truck has been amazing. If you have one, you know what I'm talking about. If you're looking at possibly buying a used Gen 1 Honda Ridgeline, if it's been kept up and you can find the records, if they've done most of the work at a dealership, you can pretty much tell what's been done to it. Take it to a reputable mechanic and have them look it over. But other than that, if it's been kept up, I say go for it because you're going to run this truck for another decade. The engines, it's not going to blow up on you. The, these trucks are amazing. I have a sunroof and it's, I use it all the time and it's still working. It's great. I have nothing but amazing things to say about my truck. So again, it's simple. It's easy. It'll make you feel good. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you. All right. Take care.